It should really be say compiled by Shaheen Merali. It's his concepts. We work well together. We yeah. have learned how to work well together. <laughs> We've learned how to work well together. What is our ultimate purpose? What is the ultimate purpose of marriage? And how can we actually achieve that through this relationship that we are now in? Why is it that there's so much importance given to this relationship and how can we maximize It should really be say, compiled by Shaheen Merali. It's his concepts. We work well together. We yeah. have learned how to work well together. <laughs> we have learned how to work well together. What is our ultimate purpose? What is the ultimate purpose of marriage? And how can we actually achieve that through this relationship that we are now in? Why is it that there's so much importance given to this relationship? And how can we maximize that? Anecdotally, in our communities at the moment, the divorce rate is one in every four. We've always said there should be only one reason why a marriage is doomed from day one. The rest of the reasons, I think, in our community, we should be able to work through. And this is the reason for this book, is to try and reduce the number of breakups. It's for anybody who wants to enhance the quality of their relationship. Maybe they're struggling maybe with communication or, you know, all these typical things that we hear about but don't really know what to do next. It covers all aspects of marriage. Just when you've gotten married and you're in the honeymoon phase to... We can hear you. I can hear you, but your voice is breaking up a bit. Can you hear me now? You're cracking up. Okay, one second. Let's see. Can you hear us clearly? Why is that? Why is that? It should really be say, compiled by Shaheen Merali. It's his concepts. We work well together. We yeah. have learned how to work well together. <laughs> we have learned how to work well together. What is our ultimate purpose? What is the ultimate purpose of marriage? And how can we actually achieve that through this relationship that we are now in? Why is it that there's so much importance given to this relationship? And how can we maximize that? Anecdotally, in our communities at the moment, the divorce rate is one in every four. We've always said there should be only one reason why a marriage is doomed from day one. The rest of the reasons, I think, in our community, we should be able to work through. And this is the reason for this book, is to try and reduce the number of breakups. It's for anybody who wants to enhance the quality of their relationship. Maybe they're struggling maybe with communication or, you know, all these typical things that we hear about, but don't really know what to do next. It covers all aspects of marriage. Just when you've gotten married and you're in the honeymoon phase to marriage after having children and then marriage in the later stages. So when me
Yo tak. It should really be say, compiled by Shaheen Merali. It's his concepts. We work well together. We yeah. have learned how to work well together. <laughs> we have learned how to work well together. What is our ultimate purpose? What is the ultimate purpose of marriage? And how can we actually achieve that through this relationship that we are now in? Why is it that there's so much importance given to this relationship? And how can we maximize that? Anecdotally, in our communities at the moment, the divorce rate is one in every four. We've always said there should be only one reason why a marriage is doomed from day one. The rest of the reasons, I think, in our community, we should be able to work through. And this is the reason for this book, is to try and reduce the number of breakups. It's for anybody who wants to enhance the quality of their relationship. Maybe they're struggling maybe with communication or you know all these typical things that we hear about but don't really know what to do next. It covers all aspects of marriage. Just when you've gotten married and you're in the honeymoon phase to marriage after having children and then marriage in the later stages so when maybe your children have grown up. We've always viewed marriage like a heartbeat monitor and you see it go ups and downs and that's really the journey we've tried to capture in this book from pre-honeymoon to the honeymoon phase to post-honeymoon and all the highs and lows we go through in a marriage journey. Ah, Abbas, can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear us? I can hear you very well. Perfect. Where's Sheikh Noor gone? He's here. Sheikh Noor. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. What's happening? Alhamdulillah, Habibi. Can you hear me? I can hear you very well. Okay, lovely, mashallah. Salam a Jabba and Sister Shaheen. Salam alaikum. You could be busy these days, huh? Salam, Habibi. How are you, man? <laughs> Very well, thank you. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, hey, MG. Coming, Sheikh, now one second. About what? Huh? Are we starting?
हाँ शेख ना यस हबीबी हबीब हाँ हज अब्बास हजते शाहीन माशाल्लाह ट we have been joined by three amazing personalities both of them very vocal about marital issues in our communities and two of them the couple have written a book and sheikh noor has been voicing his concerns over one of the biggest stages that any scholar can have the pulpit uh, on that introduction abbas has just gone for a cup of coffee for some reason i don't know where he disappeared from the screen but Uh, my dear viewers abbas and shaheen merali these are two individuals who have been working tirelessly behind the scenes have written a book um, about um, which is very famous for those who are about to get married or for those who have already gotten married from marriage to parenthood and now they've just released their new book i can see abbas is now just um, lifting the curtains for some extra light in the room uh, but before we begin tonight session it's only fair that i um, introduce um, everyone and just like we have abbas and shaheen our guest and our most inspiring um, speaker for tonight's um, show is sheikh nur muhammad for those of you who think he's kenyan he is not kenyan he's asked me to clarify this he is originally from ghana uh, was made in south africa uh, took it to another level in nairobi and is now um, at the peak in birmingham god knows what's next for him but uh, Just in case, Sheikh, if you're looking for something very exciting, Dar es Salaam door is always open. I'm going to be a bit biased about that, um, and I think it's fair that we now begin um, tonight's segment. So, we have some very interesting topics to discuss about, some very detailed analysis that we want to make about whether parents um, and in-laws, parents slash in-laws, um, are deemed okay to stay with um, their daughter-in-law or their sons. Now, Sheikh. I know you have been dealing with this um, issue very, very well, um, and I'm sure you must have got issues um, that the Birmingham community and the community in large are facing. Now, before I bring Abbas and Shaheen into this mix, because they have some very detailed um, analysis that they have done um, on their personal research, tell us what have you heard um, in regards to this issue, and most of all, do you think that this is an issue that needs addressing, or do you think that? This is actually just something minor, and people are just creating a fuss about it. Ahsan to Mr. MJ. Aul billahi min al-shaytan al-lahim al-rajim. Bi fadl bismillahi ar-rahman ar-rahim. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-aliy al-azim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wa salat wa salam wa ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al-mursalin. Habibi ilahi al-alamin. أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الجر الميامين المنتجبين. My dear brothers and sisters, respected brother Abbas and respected sister Shaheen, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. Can you allow me to take this opportunity to wish all of you Eid Mubarak? May Allah سبحانه وتعالى accept your sacrifices. and grant us his proximity through this Eid al-Mubarak. This topic is no doubt a very important topic and it's long overdue. It is something that I craved to discuss publicly long time ago. And I think this is the first public platform for me as a person to discuss this very very important topic that is the whole question of living or staying together with our elders brothers and sisters you all know very well 
family is sacred within the religion of Islam. And there are numerous traditions of our beloved Prophet and Ahl al-Bayt and verses of glorious Quran on the importance of strengthening one's family relationship. Whatever one does to ensure his family relationship or bonding is strong, it is rewarding by Allah wa Taala. And any factor that stands on the way of marriage, if it is intentionally, it is cursed by Allah Tabaraka wa Taala. I'm a resident alim, and I've been to different communities. Among the top causes of divorce within our communities, amongst the top causes of divorce, is the relationship between in-laws. So it could be father-in-law, mother-in-law, and their daughters-in-law or sons-in-law. This is something that ought to be discussed into details. It is a cause of divorce within our communities. It is not something that we sit here and brush under the carpet and push it away. Alhamdulillah, platform has been presented to us tonight. And personally, I'm going to try my level best to do due diligence to this very, very important topic. Family, as I said, is crucial. Begins with you and your wife. And then it goes, you and your uncles, you and I don't know, your brothers, you and your sisters. Quran makes it very clear that we should be conscious of the teachings of Allah in dealings with our families. Your daughter-in-law is your family member. Your mother-in-law is your family member. And some of the divorces that we are going through in our communities are caused by some headache mother-in-laws and father-in-laws. And some daughter-in-laws and sons-in-laws are also headache. Some are stomach pains. These are the causes. And so, MJ, this is not a dream. It's a reality. It's not a myth. It's not a conspiracy theory. There are boys or gentlemen, when they get married, even after five years, they still think they are mommy's boy. Mommy want to know, when do they, where are they going for holidays? What are they eating today? Eh? The grandson or granddaughter, what type of excuse my wear? Diaper are you using or nappy are you using? They want to know every single thing, which is an Islamic. We'll discuss it later. No, no, they want to go for shopping. Sometimes the boy will call his mother. Do we go to Aldi or do you go to Nakumat? They want to find out. No, no, go to Aldi. My mother said we should go to Aldi. Then we must go to Aldi. No. So it is not obligation from the religion of Islam for one to stay with his in-law. And Islam also doesn't say it's haram to stay there. So long as the relationship will work smoothly, then there's nothing wrong. So to answer your question directly, it is not wajib. What will make the relationship work is what Islam expects us to do and nothing else. And hence, according to Islam, interference of whatever kind in anyone's relationship, whether your daughter's relationship or your son's relationship, it is unacceptable and it is un-Islamic. The Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, never interfered in the relationship of Bibi Fatima, right from the beginning of proposals up until the end of the marriage. He never interfered. He knew Bibi Fatima. Bibi Fatima respected Rasulullah. They are all Masumi. Even to introduce her to Imam Amir al muminin Rasulullah suggested to Bibi Fatima and asked for her opinion, let alone interfering in their relationship. What is allowed is to guide and advice. So I stop here, inshallah, MJ. I think MJ's dropped off, Sheikh. <laughs> so you can talk for longer until he logs back on. 
Okay, so inshallah, now let's hear from uh, Habibi Hajja Abbas and Sister Shaheen. Mashallah, you've been. Yeah, he's back. Okay, he's back. He's back. He's MJ he's back. is back, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Sorry, there seems to be a bit of a technical issue. I don't know where that is happening from, but uh, it seems to be from the back end. Um, the app is really acting up. So we're trying to resolve that. In the meantime, uh, Abbas and Shaheen. Ian, you have uh, worked very tirelessly behind the scenes um, writing two books, and, and I think uh, it gives me the opportunity to um, appreciate you um, on behalf of the members of the community and the audience watching. Um, you have done a fantastic job, and I myself have been someone who has been reading this book every day, uh, more so because my wife forced me, and she said, if I don't read it, then there's going to be a lot of repercussions uh, for that. But it's been something, uh, a book that I don't regret picking up from the shelf. So it's uh, it's something that we are very proud of to know that we have members of our community who spend their time and ensuring that the lives of others are better. And as Rasulullah says, those amongst you, the best amongst you are those who spend um, their time uh, making the lives of others better. So tell us, you have obviously done a lot of marriage shows, marriage seminars. Um, is this a prevalent issue? Is it something that you feel uh, uh, has been of concern uh, lately? Or is that something that you guys have discovered um, during your journey in the marriage seminars um, in regards to uh, staying with the in-laws or staying with your parents? You want me to take it? Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I, I, I think this is, uh, it is a very interesting topic and uh, I, I'm, I'm glad even though Sheikh Noor and us didn't get a chance to uh, hammer hang coordinate before this. I think what Sheikh Nuru has said has really laid the base in how we would like to approach the topic. So where Shine and I come from, uh, we're clearly, we're not experts in this field, neither are we from the scholastic uh, angle. I think we mainly come from the work we've done in this field over the last 10, 15 years, and some of our previous training and the interactions we've had, and I guess the research we've done uh, over the years. So th the way we'll try and approach this is just to present a principle that will try and, um, give the base the, the, the base in which the concept of interference and what Sheikh Nuru was uh, was discussing this now. So w whenever we do this marriage work in the workshop, uh, we always try and discuss the root causes of marital conflict. What are the root causes that there's conflict and why is it that uh, marriages are breaking up with our, in, within our community? So we've come up with four root causes. Now the one that Sheikh Nuru picked up our interference is a, a symptomatic issue of one of the root causes. And it's not only interference, interference from in-laws is one of them, interference from friends is another, interference from siblings is another, interference from social media is another, interference from uh, the external environment, your work colleagues. Interference is a symptomatic issue based on this root cause. Uh, and the one we're gonna share today, I think is uh, relates to this is one of the root causes that marriage is tend to suffer and break up uh, is we call it the adult child mode, adult-like, child-like. Uh, and what we're trying to say here is when either both of the party in the relationship, the husband and the wife, or the husband only, or the wife only, or the parents of the wife, uh, i.e. the mother and father of the wife, or the mother and father of the parents, when they have physically transitioned in age-wise, so they may be 22, I may be 24 when I got married, but I'm still emotionally and mentally, I haven't caught up. So I may still be very childlike mm -hmm. in my approach to life, in my approach to my interaction with my, my wife, my interaction with my parents, her interaction with the parents. So I think it's just to understand this concept. So uh, I hope that's clear. I'll give you an example of what I mean in terms of behavior patterns, just to crystallize what adult child uh, mode looks like. What it is, it's a behavior pattern. It's how we approach life, how we approach our interactions. So there's always two ways. I'll give you an example. Uh, so, so, so when, when an adult approaches a, a situation uh, compared to a childlike uh, uh, approach, so anger bursts, for example, when someone gets excessively angry, compared to someone you know you can discuss with, 
One's a very childlike reaction. The person who approaches in a calm manner is more adult-like. Someone who forgives, apologizes, very when they someone who accepts responsibility, that's adult-like behavior. Someone who avoids responsibility, someone who always plays the victim, someone who's always seeking to blame, uh, someone that's childlike behavior. I'm not. I mean, that's childlike behavior. Okay. So you always see in every interaction we have, there's always an adult-like reaction and a child-like reaction. Now, the way we have been nurtured plays a significant role in the way whether we transition into adult mode or adult-like or child mode or child-like. Uh, nurturing plays a big part in this, OK? Um, so, so go and going back to Sheikh Noor's example of mommy's boy, that is a child-like mode where you can't make any decisions on your own unless you've okayed it with somebody else. You don't make those decisions independently. You are dependent on somebody else's opinion. Okay, so so this is a yeah good. So so MJ, I don't know if you've got that slide that I I okay. sent. I don't think MJ is back. So I shared a slide, and if he comes back, um, and and Sheikh will also help with this hadith uh, about the prophetic hadith, and I think the way that goes is. Uh, that prophetic tradition says the child is a master for seven years, a slave for seven years, and for the next seven years he's a vizier. If he grows into good, if he grows into good character, well and good. Otherwise, leave him alone because you have discharged your responsibility. So I'm just going to paraphrase this this uh, uh, hadith, okay? And then Sheikh will help bring the 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 the, the, the deeper uh, understanding of this. So. In this hadith, I think what it's trying to say is that in the second seven years, it's where the, the parents are now training, nurturing, guiding, advising their child or their children. Then there comes a period in which the parent, so that's the parent, that's the child. Now the parent has to become and, and, and guide the, the son or the daughter into an adult mode, a vizier mode, where there's a, a sideways relationship rather than a top-down relationship. Um, and I think this is where, relating to Sheikh Nuri's example of where you have a mummy's boy or a, a, a mummy's girl or a father's girl, uh, et cetera, et cetera, is where that transition hasn't happened. You may be 24 or 28. Or in many cases, I mean, I can even relate to my own example. I probably didn't transition into adult mode, maybe into my mid thirties. Okay, so age is uh, a physical, but it's this emotional transition uh, that I think causes these uh, issues. And and also, it's possible maybe to be in adult mode for some areas of your life, but then when we come to our parents, potentially we resort to childlike mode very easily. Uh, simply because it's the pattern in which we've grown up with and not transitioned. So we may be very adult mode outside with our friends, but then suddenly in the home or when parents come over or in that situation, we become very childlike. And again, we play the old patterns out again. Yeah, and in relationships also, uh, when we are, don't have to necessarily put up a front, it is very easy to resort to childlike mode quite quickly in that situation too. Yeah. So I hope that made sense, Shafin in terms of the model trying to yeah uh, i i don't see uh, mj there but definitely brother abbas and sister shaheen this makes perfect sense in the sense that this is the teachings of our beloved prophet and ahl al-bayt on how to mold our children as they grow you know he said first seven as you mentioned second seven and the third seven so the first one of course you leave the child to be you know, That's in terms it. of making them play, make them enjoy. Don't become strict with a child. That is why in this day and age, when you take your children to nurseries, to schools, primary level, they make them play, you know, to explore. And then the second seven, of course, that's the time you really have to keep teaching them because that maturity is building up slowly but surely. And by the end of the third seven, it should be or she should be your advisor, your friend someone you know you can consult any other time and islam is not saying the other way around although there is nothing wrong you consulting your father and consulting your mother but by the age 21 
if the upbringing is taken care of properly, as per the traditions of the prophet, and even today's psychologists also mention that, then you'll not have a problem, really. You'll have a small problem here and there, but you know, you can be rest assured your son or your daughter is indeed the wife or the husband. And of course, taking from what Brother Abbas and Sister Shaheen mentioned before our, you know, anchor comes back, you know, <laughs> before the technology allows him in. You know, our dear viewers, the aim behind this discussion is to ensure that we have healthy relationships within our communities. Because yeah. everything begins with marriages. If we don't get that department right, be rest assured, any other department will collapse. Everything begins with marriage. And so, you are sometimes a husband, or you are husband and then you have wife. Husband or wife, at the same time, you are also son and daughter. So you have two relationships to deal with. The first relationship is that between you and your husband or you and your wife. You've got, you know, to adhere to the teachings of Islam when it comes to the right of your wife and the right of your husband. And at the same time, you have relationship with your parents. So your father is there and your mother is there. You also have to adhere to the principles of Islam when it comes to the relationship between you and your parents. The invitation that we get from Islam is that you should be able to give your wife or your husband his or her due rights. And at the same time, give your father or mother their rights. Now question is, how do I go about this to ensure that there is no interferences or overlapping? You know, it begins with you, you as a wife and daughter, or you as a son and a husband. Let's begin with a wife and a daughter. Once you are married, my dear sister, know that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala views you with a certain view. What is that view? That now you have come of an age where you are able to build a house or civilization. Sort of independent, but no one is absolute independent. You will still rely, rely on others to advise you. But you are expected to be able to run your house according to the way you deem it fit, so long as it is not in contradiction or contrary to the teachings of Islam. You as a daughter-in-law, you are not there to cause any friction between your husband and his mother. You are there to play your part to bring the family together. So what is important is what? Know your rights and know the rights of your husband. And your mother or your parents, they also have rights over you. What right do they have over you? Kindly pay attention to this. They've got the right of you being kind to them. That obedience which Islam talks about, it's not just, you know, blind obedience. You know what I mean? It's to be kind to them, it's to reach out to them. Islam says, whenever your parents ask you to do something which is contrary to the teachings of Allah, you should not do it. If your mother or your father, you as a wife, you realize that they are becoming cause for division, for destruction of your relationship. Don't be rude to them. Don't shout at them. Don't insult them. Stand your ground and seek advice on how to go about it. Don't say that, no, she is my mother. Whatever she said, I've seen situations where mothers will call their husband, we are coming to part with the clothes of our daughter. And they don't give the daughter even a chance. But it begins with you as a daughter, as a wife. You've got to play your part diplomatically and in accordance with the teachings of Islam. You as a husband, you are a husband and at the same time you are a son. I don't want to hear this situation whereby, Sheikh, I don't know what to do. My mother wants me to do this and my wife wants me to do this. My mother said this, my wife said this. Someone will come, Sheikh, 
my wife said she wants to go to Dubai. But my mother said, no, we shouldn't go to Dubai. We should go for Ziara. I don't know what to do, Michelle. I'm stressed up, Michelle. I'm depressed. I don't know what to do. I said, Baba, my brother, you are a husband and you are a son at the same time. Islam says, be obedient to your mother. May any be kind to her. Reach out to her. Take care of her needs. Her advising you, you need to process it. Likewise, when your wife advises you, you have to process it. Islam is not saying when your father or mother tells you, you should ask them how high I jump. No. Look at, let's take Q from the life of Bibi Fatima, alayhi salam. Yes. Show that you disagree, but in a very respectful and diplomatic way. Stand your ground, Habibi. As we mentioned, and Brother Abbas Shaini beautifully highlighted, you cannot continue to be mommy's boy and daddy's boy, or mommy's daughter and daddy's daughter until Qiyamah. That woman has right over you, and that husband has right over you. Also, parents, your daughter-in-law or your son-in-law, they are like your sons and daughters. They are not married to make them cook from morning to Isha. Cook, fine, they cook, no problem. But it doesn't mean that if they don't cook, your other daughter cannot cook in the house. We know of situations where daughter-in-law is so only asked to cook throughout the day. Washing machine, that if she said, I'm tired, it becomes mayhem. She is like your daughter. She also has the right over you. Treat her the way you will treat your daughters and your sons. Likewise, your son-in-law. And the same thing, daughter and son, treat your daughter, your father-in-law and mother-in-law like your parents. Then we can have this relationship going forward. Islam, Islam does not allow us to just say yes to our parents when they ask us to divorce our wives or our husbands. There is nothing like that in Islam. And it's so important we understand that. So as a father-in-law, as a mother-in-law, be careful. Don't become cause for the divorce of your daughter or your son. Unless if it's totally beyond reproach, beyond our control, you've tried everything, it doesn't work out. And it is not wajib, let me repeat it, for your daughter-in-law or your son-in-law to stay with you. And of course, Islam is also not saying, don't stay together. So long as it will be healthy, there is nothing wrong. But my point is what? Let us all do self-interceptions. Daughter-in-law, son-in-law, father-in-law, mother-in-law. Are you happy with the way you are treating your in-laws? If Imam Zaman comes now to you, will you put your hand on your chest and say, you know what? The way I'm treating my daughter-in-law and my father-in-law, I am happy and I'm proud to put my hand on my chest and say to my beloved Imam, I've done my part. It's not always we have to follow culture, 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 culture. We follow culture if it does not contradict with the teachings of Islam. We have to do the right thing. Don't treat your mother-in-law badly because someone will treat your mother like that. Don't treat your daughter-in-law badly because someone. We've got situations where daughter-in-law is told, you cannot work. You are married to stay here. But the sister or her sister-in-law is allowed to do as she pleases. We have situations where daughter-in-law is busy spending quality time with her husband. She's called, come make tea for me. Don't distract people's relationship. It's of great importance to emulate and follow the footsteps of Ahl al-Bayt And I repeat, one of the causes of divorce within our community is unnecessary interference. This unnecessary interference is causing mayhem. It's causing big problem. Typical example I give you. Someone is blessed with a child. You find the in-laws, maybe they are not in the same city. Every single day they will call. I want to know about my grandchild. I want to know, what have you done? What food have you given them? Baba, this is not your duty. At the age of 21, you are expected, in fact, to advise your parents. 
And so therefore, what we need and what we not, we need to work on our marriages. And the best way to do so is to know our limits. We all have our limits and we need to stick to that limit. We should not go beyond that. Thank you. Now I will hand it over to Haji Abbas and Sister Shahid. So, so you know what, Sheikh, I think we'll just dovetail of uh, what you said on the, the human side, the practical psychological side of why do parents interfere and why do we as a couple allow interference? Uh, and I think this is, this is, so this is where it, it, it is the area of uh, conflict, okay? Our parents want to see us happy. Our parents want to see Abbas and Shine happy, okay? Uh, but then our parents want to interfere, for example. And they know if they're interfering, it's causing issues about Abbas and Shaheen. So on the one hand, the head is saying, I want them to be happy. The heart is interfering. So there's a conflict between their own head and their own heart. Uh, and then there's, a, there's this uh, uh, discomfort between the parents themselves. So I think this is where uh, we've applied this model to try and understand more. So let me give you an example. The reason why they interfere in a marriage, if you break it down, is because they still feel they know what's best for Abbas and Shaheen. Even at 30 or 35, if they're still every day, daily calling and interfering, and what I mean, the way to phrase interfering in here is this constant need to correct how we live our life the constant need to give us advice on how to do, how to feed the child, how to put him to sleep. Why are you making him cry when you're putting them to sleep? Uh, why haven't you called your aunt? Why haven't you called your uncle? What have you cooked? Have you made sure you've uh, gi given this FaceTime, et cetera, et cetera, on a daily basis? That means they're still viewing us as children of their, and they don't trust us yet, that we're able to now carry on what they've nurtured us for the first 20 years of that. So they still feel that they can't. So here's where we found to be two issues, okay? Uh, and I think we came to a realization, is that sometimes our parents themselves never have never transitioned into adult mode themselves. They, unfortunately, maybe one of them, maybe both of them, but generally speaking, you'll see one parent is still very much because they haven't transitioned to adult mode they've never known how to let the couple live in adult mode of their life i hope that makes sense and therefore they feel it's very normal to interfere every day etc etc that's the first thing i think the second thing here and this is what we've seen when a mother or a father have made their children the sole focus of their life growing up they never had a life of their own. Their life was only their children. Everything about their life just revolved around their child, okay? Now, you can imagine this for 22, 23, 24, again, I'm getting an example, Shaheen or Abbas was the only focus of my parents and her parents, the only focus. Now, if that is the case, if she moves away and she's left the a home and she's come to my home now and now we're married you can imagine the void and the loss in the life of the parents because she was the sole focus or he was the sole focus of this thing and therefore the head is saying i should give them space the heart has found the separation almost like death like there's grief i've lost my son and my daughter and then the only natural reaction to deal with that is to constantly call them and interfere. And then when we don't respond to them, they feel so lost, I guess is the word, right? They feel so upset. And then they feel like we're disrespecting them. Uh, uh, and, and then this is where this very vicious cycle begins. I, I hope I've articulated myself, you wanna add? Yeah. And then on the flip side, so that's where the parents are coming from. On the flip side, there's two things really. Um, one is, if the children haven't transitioned themselves and they are also stuck in child mode, they won't be able to put up that limit. Like you said, you know, um, that they should say, no, that's not right for us. 
So if a person, if the couple, either one or both, and in fact, conflict often happens when one is in adult mode and doesn't always want to do what the, the parents say, and the other is in child mode, that's where a lot of conflicts then even start appearing within the relationship itself. Because one says, no, but my mom said this, and so we have to do it, and the other says, no, we are, we're grown up now, we can make our own decisions, it's our own house, and then that, that starts. Yeah. And I want to pick up on a point that you said, Sheikh. Th this happens, This when you mentioned obedience, I yeah. think this is the biggest confusing word for people. I remember once we asked in a workshop, how many people think that you should obey your parents? And many people put their hand up. And in fact, if they didn't, they felt very yeah. ashamed, like I'm saying I shouldn't obey my parents. Obedience, and I think you clarified this here, obedience means what we actually say for obedience, we mean respect. Yes, you have to respect your parents. It is wajib to respect your parents. But obedience, you don't have to obey in that sense. Because now you have been transitioned into an adult. At 21, you should be a self-standing adult. And you should, within yourselves, be able to make a decision that's right for you and for your situation. So, and it's very, very hard sometimes to say to your parents who don't understand why you know, you're not getting the sofa that they want, but you're getting the one that they want, or why you're tra traveling to Dubai and not Ziara. It is very hard. And it will be uncomfortable at first to say, I really respect your decision, but we're going to go with ours. That discomfort is OK. That discomfort in, in, in setting those boundaries is a way of you growing up and saying, actually, I love you. I respect you. I hear how much you care for me. but." And for in this situation, we're not going to do that. I think there was one scholar when we were at, at a workshop and they said uh, it is haram to disrespect your parents, but it's healthy to disagree with them. It's healthy to disagree with your parents, but haram to disrespect them. I think once because disagreeing is adult behavior. We as a couple, two adults in a relation, we disagree all the time. That's healthy because she will have a mind of her own. I have a mind of her own. I have an opinion. China has an opinion. We're going to disagree. The issue will come is when parents also confuse this issue eh, because they still view you. Our parents, I, I am now a, a parent myself. My son is transitioning to now his 15. I still, in my own eyes, still view him as that son. I remember at four years old with the chubby, chubby cheeks. And, you know, and it's the same with our parents. It, and until we, as the couple, uh, set the boundaries, then they, as a parent, will also learn to set the boundaries. But if they, this, they, they decide to still play the parent, we decide to play the child, they won't realize mm. the, that, that pattern will continue. Welcome back, MJ. I hope that makes sense. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, can, can everyone hear me now? Yeah. We can. Okay, finally. Uh, first of all, my apologies to you, dear viewers. Um, we do have very good internet in Tanzania, but it wasn't an internet issue. I promise you, it's just a bit of a technicality with the StreamYard app that we are using. Uh, but um, a special thanks to Ali Chandu for sorting this out. Now, um, let's get back to back to the conversation. I've seen a lot of messages here. And I've seen a debate about whether we should go to Dubai or should we go to Ziara. Um, I know Sheikh Noor would say Ziara because um, that's where spiritual journeys uh, um, actually have formed their basis. But <clears throat> one of the key things I have seen uh, when it comes to um, in-laws and parents' uh, relationship or son and parents' relationship when a daughter-in-law walks in, I think when you... Let, let's talk about an argument, for example. You know, let's say um, the boy has gone out, he's at, he's at work, and then all of a sudden, the daughter-in-law and the mother have a bit of an argument. Um, let's say it was a pancake recipe. It's, um, it's three eggs and the mother thinks it's four eggs. And there's a big argument over there. And then the... the, the comes back from work, gets in, and... And all of a sudden, he realizes there's two people that are very close to him. The mother of 
you think that that this is my son i've given birth to him um he's going to follow me and then you have the daughter in law and then you have the son who if he had an opportunity would come to a conclusion to say hey you know what let's come down and what side do you take this is quite a common one actually but well, we didn't hear the whole question i think what he was saying was that if what he what i what i heard and sheikh i don't know let us know if you think it's the same thing if the husband goes out to play football or whatever and in the meantime, the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law have had some sort of misunderstanding, some sort of argument. About a pancake recipe, about you're saying. a pancake recipe. Yeah. And then um, they've come, he's come home and both of them are upset uh, and both of them are complaining to him. Which side should he take? Okay, so I think Shine, I hope, has deciphered the question right yeah. uh, from MJ. So, so we is, actually have really, another, really very, really this is cool. very common. Yeah. And we have a, another very similar example uh that we've seen uh, and we'll also share from another couple uh, so so this is where it, it is i think what we need to understand is yes again adult child yes, comes into this. yes as a wife for example if something has upset me he will be the first person i want to go to but here's the thing i don't necessarily or very early on i think we agreed that i don't want him to fix my problem for me and this is really really crucial that very often problems start happening when let's say something's happened to upset me for example between I, you and yeah, my mother say, for example yeah. yeah and let's say abbas comes home from work and i tell him oh you know i'm so angry this happened for example and the next thing abbas does is stands up and storms into the kitchen and starts having it out with you know with his mom that is abbas playing the messenger and that is the biggest and very quickest way to get uh, an issue. Because what it will do is it will cause an issue between him and his mother, because he will be upset at his mom, his mom will be upset at him. Then uh, uh, the mom will also be upset with me because I've gone basically in tattoo tail. Then, and Behind her back. Yeah, and he, you know, he's had to come in between. And chances are nothing necessarily good is going to come out of that. So. It's just a, a triangular mess, which just keeps adding on and adding on and adding on. And we have heard this personal anecdotes time and time again. And that's because um, we are making our husbands or the other way around, perhaps the messenger. So the important thing here is that if I'm upset, yes, I want to go to you, you know, to, to, to vent me. Which is normal. Yeah, which yeah. is normal. But that's all. As a husband or as a wife, we don't have to fix the problem in that relationship. And in fact, when we ask or when we want them to go and like, if I tell him, go and speak to your mom and tell her that's not okay, then that's me being in child mode. That's me being saying, I can't deal with this. You have to sort it out for me. Yeah, exactly. If I'm in adult mode or adult, you know, emotionally, I will say, you know what? Once I've vented, then I'm calmer. And I'll just say, you know what, maybe later when I'm thinking a little bit more clearly, I'll go and have a conversation with mom myself. And actually, um, the, again, the, the in-laws can play a really, really big role here. I remember, um, Alhamdulillah, I'm blessed with a very, very forward thinking mother-in-law who, you know, who's kind of left us to be very independent. Because she herself life. is an adult. Yeah. She is a, 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 an adult by her own And life. one of the things she did from very early on was... Shaheen, to... sorry, 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 Shaheen. Abbas has just slid in a very interesting comment. You know, he's just praised his mom in a very subtle way. And don't you think this is, uh, this is where it starts, you know? And uh, I'm, I'm sorry to break you up uh, and, and to interrupt you, but uh, I want to spice this up a bit. I think... Uh, uh, you know, we have, you know, we have instances where the mother-in-law um, seems to be of a, of a different generation. And you yeah. have the daughter-in-law who is from a completely different generation. I'll give you my example. Uh, my, uh, my wife-to-be is from UK and my, mom, and my mom is from Tanzania. And I'm not saying that they have differences, but these are two different cultures, two different countries, two different languages as well. You know, and, and, and I think that's where the problem is. I think... The problem is not when you have a straight road without any potholes. I think the problem we have is when you have curvy roads with no lights in there, no reflectors, and that's when things get difficult. Now, 
your advice has been amazing and and and, and my wife to be also messaged me and said this advice is so good so thank you for sorting my life oh, but, but, now mj i'm going to flip it back to you give it okay? to me what are you going to do in this very scenario because you know the the most interesting fact is and shaykh nuru picked this up is it the nail on the head issues between husband and wife are no longer happening because you're living in the same brick house technology has made this world so small now facetime right. video call snapchat whatever it is you can be living in a virtual home together because you're connected 24 7. i'm going out with shaheen to little i'll say i'll call my mother for example i'll say we're little she said why did you go to little go to nakumat using that example so then we go to nakumat and then we have to video call her and show her now i'm thinking of buying this shine is telling me buy something else now this is where what is your this is where i think it becomes very important this model of yeah, adult I child think, mode yes i agree but but again I, and i'm going to flip a question back at you because as a moderator i love um, dodging uh, dodging a bullet so i'm going to give give it back to you at what point do you say enough communication um, and enough um, getting into a relationship. So, for example, Sheikh Noor, like he gave the example of whether you should go to Lidl or another supermarket. Now, the question is, do you really have to ask um, your parents, um, or does she have to ask her mother-in-law, "Hey, you know what? I am now going out for I am now going out for dessert with my friends, but um, we are supposed to be at this place, and then you know, I, this is the friend I was with. This is what I, I think. So, as much as the world has become a smaller one, I think too much communication has also led to a bit of, 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 of friction. Don't you think so? So this is where I think we we're getting to the crux of the issue. The issue is not how much you communicate with yeah. your parents. That's not the issue. You can genuinely, and we will genuinely communicate, or we may genuinely communicate with our parents on a constant basis. It's what you do after the communication. Okay. Or, or even what the content of the communication is. You can have, you know, be on a WhatsApp group and be chatting constantly, this, that, the other, and that's perfectly fine. But if you're constantly WhatsApping to ask permission or to mm. ask questions advice. or to ask advice, that's where. So there's no right or wrong about how much you should communicate. It's it's what you communicate about, what yeah. that content is. And, and, and I think what Shine was saying, this is, I think, one of the key and maybe Sheikh Nur may also agree. One of the key issues of a problem is when the husband uses the wife to play the messenger with her parents. Where the wife uses the husband to play the messenger of, 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 of her issues. That is the fundam one of the most because he I've treated her as a child, I'm fighting her battles. She's treated me as a child because she's fighting my battles. We, I think we've made a very clear rule. If I've got an issue with her parents, for example, I speak to them directly. If she's got an issue with my parents, she speaks to my parents directly. So this goes back to my, that point that I was making, which is on the, on the side of the parents, it can come from the parents, and it came from Abbas's mom here, where very early on, she sat me down, and I think she did this to all of her daughter-in-laws, and you know, said, look, if there's any issues, come to me. And she was she was very open from the very beginning and this is if if, you, if there are any mother-in-laws out there or they're about to be this is something that's really really helpful for me it basically allowed me there was no uh, you know assume there were no assumptions everything was mm. clear and that is really really good and if the mother-in-law doesn't do that there's nothing to say the daughter-in-law or the son-in-law can't do that as well um, but just to keep that direct communication going so there's no need to then go to somebody else that open relationship is already set up from the beginning interesting um Sheikh Nur, let's bring you here because i think you have been nodding your head you want to say a few things you have um with with your experience and 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 with the amount of um exposure you have uh, had um alhamdulillah uh, with your traveling and your service to the community i'm sure you have dealt with issues like this and you have dealt with uh, with situations where a parent um, um, seems to have an issue with the son now. You know, as much as this has been about a daughter-in-law and, and the mother-in-law, um, I think the sons are also, I mean, including ourselves as men, we, you know, we, we love dodging a bullet. We are very good at doing that. Uh, and, uh, you know, and we also have, have, have a comment here where it also talks about how do you deal with a situation where a sister is dominant over the daughter-in-law in a family. So, so it's, you know, in, in a fam very famous uh, Khoja ideology, this is a proper kichro. You know, you have all ingredients, um, 
put in there and you're just waiting for the chili to come in and just spice it up. So your cases that you have dealt with, the amount of um, issues you have faced, what do you think is the prime cause of this issue? Apart from communication, obviously, that has already been, 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 been covered. But what, what is it, uh, apart from communication, that seems to be a very big problem? Uh, thank you, thank, thank, thank you, MJ. And thanks, of course, to Haji Abbas and Sister Shaheen for really beautiful uh, explanation on how to deal with this issue. You know, you don't have to solve the problem. You know, it's not Waji on you to solve the problem. Disagreement will always be there. You know, your mom will disagree with your wife, your wife will disagree with your mom. That's not a big deal. That's not the beginning of disagreement. How you approach it is crucial. Islam does not expect you to favor one over the other. Just because she's your mom, so you're going to favor her over your wife. And just because you love your wife so much and you are crazy about her, so you're going to favor her about your mom. Relax, chill, take your time. You know, calm both them. You know, talk to your mom. Mommy, relax, I will deal with it. Don't stress yourself. I see some of our guys become too stressful. You know, Sheikh, I don't know what to do. Um, you know, I'm in between these two people. No, 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 relax. Take it easy. You will be able to handle it later. If you can't, there are elders, there are people with experience within our community. You don't have to solve it overnight. What is important is to make sure your marriage doesn't get broken because of that. Now, MJ, coming back to your question, I think one of the main factors here, which Brother Basil Shaheen highlighted earlier on, is the whole misunderstanding of the terminology Ehsan. Wabil Walidain Ehsan, the Quran said. What is the meaning of Ehsan? Ehsan doesn't mean obedience. Ehsan is not obedience. Ehsan simply means kindness, generosity. Look at the ayah. It's chapter Israel, isn't it? Allah makes it very clear. When it comes to Allah, he said, Obudiya, be obedient to Allah. Worship him. Then he said, be kind to your parents. And so we need to understand when Allah says be kind to your parents, does not mean that you cannot disagree with them. Respectfully and diplomatically disagree with them. There's nothing wrong. That's number one factor. Number two factor, which to me is the cause of all these issues, is not differentiating properly between concerns and interference. You know, some think that, no, I'm concerned. He's losing his religion. She's losing her faith, so I step in. I want to know everything that they do. No, 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 no. What is concern, my mother, my father? Concern simply means they are either going against the law of Allah or going against the law of their nation, because I'm passionate about that also. You cannot just go against the law of your nation where you live. Then you realize that they are not doing the right thing. You draw their attention. That's your duty as parent, draw their attention. Don't blame one and leave the other. It's not about blaming them. Draw their attention. You as an adult, as a mother, as a father, your role is to treat both your son and your daughter-in-law or your daughter and your son-in-law as your own sons and daughters. Draw their attention. If you can't handle, there are experts within the communities. You have people like Haji Abbas de Shaheen, you have our scholars. Draw their attention, call them. I need advice how to go about this thing. That's very, very important. What is interference? Interference is that you want to know everything they do. It is not acceptable. By interfering, you are not helping them to grow. Tomorrow, may Allah forbid, if you are no more in this world, they will struggle. Believe me or not, if you are no more in this world, and Brother Bas made it very clear, today we are in a global village. There is no Africa anymore. There is no Western anymore. People go to the shopping mall and they want to FaceTime their parents. Today we are doing palm cane in the house. That is not acceptable. Don't interfere, my mother. Don't interfere. And sometimes you have these headache sisters. Some sisters are headache and stomach pain understand you as a sister-in-law you have no duty here 
Your duty is to do Amr bil Maruf if there is a need for that. You huh. don't have any duty. Your, your, you know, your sister-in-law or your brother's wife, she's not your servant. She's not in that house to wash your, your clothes. I'm not saying she should do it. She want to do fine. It's ibadah. I don't have any problem. But you can't force her to do it. And it is not acceptable for sister-in-laws because we have these situations where sister-in-laws cause the divorce of others. That's not your duty. Your brother is married. Let him be. If you have any concern about the relationship, find a good route to address it. So therefore, MJ, to directly answer your question, how do you deal with this sister-in-law? You as a husband, don't entertain this whenever someone comes to you. Know that marriage is an act of worship. It is not just easy. Half of your faith is being fulfilled. The daughter or the lady you've taken, she is a man in your hand. And she has to be treated as a man. And parents, don't allow your daughters to interfere in the marriages of your sons. That violates the teachings of Quran and the teachings of Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Be careful. As a father, as a mother, don't become a cause for divorce because you will not be able to answer that question on the day of Qiyamah. This is not a joke. It's a very, very serious. I mentioned earlier on, even when it comes to accepting proposals, yes, we have the consent which Islam beautifully discussed. You giving the consent doesn't mean that you imposed on your daughter who she should get married with. This is our religion. It's a beautiful way of life. And so there are ways of doing it. You don't have to solve things overnight like that. You have to take it easy and reach out to those people who are good at it and they can help you sort out the issue. If there is one thing that can easily take people to Jahannam, it's marital relationship. Let's be careful. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, Abbas, I, I'm coming to you only. Um, you can, I just, I just um, Sheikh, you mentioned a few things where, the, you know, I think... According to me, the, the biggest concern I have from, 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 from what you said is there is interference and then sometimes parents don't think or don't consider it as an interference. They, they consider it as, um, in, in the Gujarati, they said, uh, you know, and, and which in English means I am trying to teach her the norms and the traditions and the culture of this household. You know? so, and, and that's why I'm coming to you, Abbas and Shain. At what point do you draw a line between um, this is advising and this is interfering. I think, you know, uh, you can't blame them with the nature that they have come up with. Our parents and many elderly parents come from a nature where they were they were married young and they were married, unfortunately, not um, fully or highly educated or exposed um, as we were. And therefore, they, they, they just inherited a way of life. And therefore, they might not consider this as, as, as interfering. They just feel that it is their right to advise and to, and to guide so that... Uh, again, in the Gujarati, they say "chokra hat mati na so that we don't lose our son um, to to our daughter-in-law. You know, and so that's where I think uh, we we need to get your advice. Where do you draw a line and say, "Hey, you know what? This is no longer advising. This is actually creating a rift now." Okay, so so MJ, when we do this uh, work here uh, and we we explore and go deeper into this adult mode, child mode uh, right. uh, behavior and outlook to life there's one four letter acronym we always use it's very similar to uh w ywna but it's not ywna this is mj listen basi uh, no, w... no, Ab sorry change your change your why <laughs> so, uh, what is this he's bringing his y and w uh, can, uh, uh, Sister Shine, can you please take this over? I, 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 I can't stand this word. Can so this, you is, take this, over? this is another four-letter acronym that is, it plays a fundamental role in adult behavior and the relationship sideways that helps the relationship between our parents. It's WWYC or WWOC. What is within our control? What is within my control? What is within Shine's control? And what is within our control as a couple? This is like the bedrock of adult-based behavior, okay? Our parents, we can never control their behavior. Neither can we control their, their intense love for us. They are always looking out for what's best for us. They will interfere. They'll give guidance 
etc etc i think this is the crux it's not how much they call us it's okay they can call us every day we can be on facetime every day the issue comes is what happens after they call us if they call us and we we haven't got each other's backs if i haven't got shine's back shine hasn't got my back if her and i are not on the same page okay our parents will always give us advice i'll give you one example in our own relationship for example my mother will say this may be true this may not be true i hope my mother is listening we we have had a a, a very good discussion on this she will say you must get a cleaner for your house and we'll have this discussion but shine and i will discuss it and we say you know what we're happy with the way things are we don't I need have a, clean a clean house we have a clean house for example just i'm just giving up but my mom will insist no i think you need because they okay thank you for your advice but her, if her and i agree then we we'll say actually mom i agree i agree i i understand where you come from but i've discussed it with shine and unfortunately i disagree with you on this point so that is what's within our control the decision we made after the interference or the advice now that is i think one of the the most critical uh, factors in this what happens is now sometimes a mother will feel bad ke mara chokra ave bai re no the gyo khali eno chambre ch ha this is this is now where you as a son or shine as a daughter has just got to manage that relationship with our own parents I remember this advice uh and this is diplomacy at its peak. They said on the first night of marriage you go to your mother and you tell her. So I tell my mother for example. I said mom sambro kale mara we are tight I'm getting married tomorrow. Just remember one thing. This is a new relationship I'm going to start forming with my wife Shahin. Just remember you'll always be my mother. No one will ever replace you. but in case i agree disagree with you in front of shine just remember nothing will come between you and me as father as mother and son this is a special bond then you go to your wife you tell shine listen uh you know you and i are getting married tomorrow sometimes i may agree with my mother in front of you and that doesn't mean i'm disagreeing with you just remember you're the only woman i've picked in my life the rest have come not by my choice you have a special place in my life that i'm the only you're the only one i've picked so so it's the role but you are in control of that relationship 100% the minute you let go of control that means you've delegated it and you've gone into that child mode phase I hope that makes sense yeah i just want to add something here as well there is nothing wrong with helping somebody integrate into your family oh uh, this is good nirit yeah, yeah. so i mean the garnery it's fine molding it okay we have to mold her on intention is if your intention is to help her transition into the family easier then brilliant or you know this is kind of how we we like having roti with our meal for example was an example we were discussing earlier or you know um this is how we we usually do it on eid day for example the problem comes when a we want to change the other person because what we have to remember or what we would like our parents to remember is that somebody is coming into your house with their own culture and their own traditions and their own wreath and their own wreath and some of those are really good and some of those they like and some of those they want to keep and when you enter a relationship sideways relationship abbas will bring in certain things in you know from his uh, upbringing i will bring in certain things from my upbringing and now as we make our way forward we have to decide between us which of that are bringing he wants to keep we want to keep together and which new ones we want to bring in together so i it's not that and i'm I, i'm i'm hoping you know most parents don't want to necessarily have someone come in and change her or make her exactly like how they want things to be yeah. but it's more to make them comfortable um you know in in the family environment explain why we do stuff like how we do stuff and also give them time to adapt they it shouldn't be like well i've told, already told you once this is how we do it what's the what's the problem here right there should be it, it would it's beautiful if you can have conversation about it uh you know we tend to for example uh, we tend to have a family dinner together you know every day um uh, whereas some people may um uh, have it only on weekends or whatever and just explaining how we've been brought up and and what we like and and then deciding together as a unit what you want to take forward 
I think is is the ideal way because there's 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 really good things in both. Um, thank you, Sister Shaila. I've just got a few messages. You are people's role model. Your advices are very good. Um, you you seem to have uh, um, changed a lot of um, perspectives and aspects for for people. So so well done on that. And and all of you watching this show um, from whichever community you are in, um, Abbas and um, Shaheen um, have dedicated their lives in in doing um, stuff. Um, like these so that they can enable people to have a fruitful um, and a very healthy relationship. So they also do travel across the world where they, um, they, they have workshops and they have seminars and they've done it in various parts of the world. And I'm sure um, the, the, those individuals in charge of Africa Federation um, and of these matters will take this uh, matter a bit much more seriously um, and start doing these workshops. And, and, and I agree, there's a few comments coming in from Sister Nishad Karim saying that we need um, innovation in how we tackle these topics. And I, and I fully agree, uh, you know, these are not topics, uh, Sheikh, I think, I don't know if you agree with me, but uh, probably um, doing this uh, from a member might have uh, a lot of repercussions for you. Um, don't you think so? No, not really, not really. So, no. so, so let's say, let's say if you went, member, if, let's say if you went to the member and you just went all out on mother-in-laws, what would the reaction be? Would we have a WhatsApp broadcast about you? You see, don't uh, always try to impress everyone. Right. I've learned something in my life. Before I give any talk, I process it. I look at it from different angle altogether. Because if you don't say it, nobody will say it. There are certain topics, don't be diplomatic about it. You need to really speak either about it or against it. And then people will pick it up. Otherwise, if you don't do it, you keep all, you know, battering it, massaging it nicely. It will never get solved, MJ. You understand? Don't always seek to impress the entire. Imam Ali never impressed everybody. You understand? You know, Rasulullah did not impress everybody. Who is Sheikh Nur to impress everyone? And the thing is, you know, if you look at our communities, member is a highly revered. You know, member is a highly revered. And when people start hearing it yeah. from member, they take it on board. You understand? Especially our elders. They love member. They want to hear from member. If you say, I mean, Muharram is coming. It's massive. What's the point? I'm speaking something on my member, which the, my people are not affected with. I just massage them. Wow, 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 wow. Sheikh Noor has done well. Then we've gone back. Our marriages, you know, we make, you know, you, you, you solemnize marriages 100%. Next year comes 60, 70% divorce. Yes, these are the situations. So it's very, very important. Member has to come on board. You know, uh, workshops with Haji Abbas, Sister Shaheen, and other mm -hmm. experts within our communities, it has to come on board. But the bottom line is, you know what, MJ, as you mentioned, and Brother Abbas also mentioned, you know, you as a husband, as a youth, you have to be in charge of your relationship. Respect your parents. Respect your sister. But be in charge. If you are telling me our elders, they are old-fashioned. You are not old-fashioned then. Although not all our elders are old-fashioned. Some of them are smarter than us. You take charge of your relationship. What Allah expects you to do. Some roads, is all about culture. And how do you draw the line between culture and what Islam says? It's very simple, Habibi, from my own perspective. Culture is excellent, but don't seek to change the girl who is coming to your house. Excellent. You're just going to help her to adapt to the situation. There's nothing wrong with that. But if your aim as mother-in-law or father-in-law is to completely change this girl, then it becomes a problem. How do you address it? We need more programs like this. We need workshops. We need a member. Muharram is coming. These social issues are vital. I do not know. People who are hearing and listening to us, what they think about it. This is a big issue. It's not a joke. We sit and solemnize marriages. Do you know how many divorces are happening? Do you know? It's not a joke. We can only build healthy community 
for the reappearance of our imam when our marriages are excellent. And so, yes, MJ, member has to say, of course, everybody has his own way of saying, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Someone may be very, very diplomatic to start and say, people don't even understand what he say. Yeah, <laughs> interesting that you, <laughs> interesting you say that. I, I want to I wanna ask you two questions. Yeah. Uh, but but before I, I ask this question, I just want to throw a statistic um, up here. I'm not going to mention the Jamaat because um, it's been given to me in confidentiality. In the year 2019, so this is the weddings that were recited in 2019. These are not 2018. No, sorry, 2009, 2019. Um, I don't remember this. So the year that the wedding was recited, one third of those weddings resulted into a divorce. So the wedding happened, let's say, in January so between January and, to, and December, if there were 100 weddings, then a third of those weddings resulted to divorces. And, 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 and this is a, a great concern um, across many communities. Now, uh, because we discussed the Islamic perspective, I want to ask you two questions, uh, Sheikhna. One is uh, related to the topic, which is now, um, because we will be approaching the end of this program very soon, is staying with your parents um, or um staying with uh, your in-laws is it an islamic practice okay and to counter ask that question um brother shakil sharif has just uh, come in uh, and has and has said um something very interesting and he's asked your question is there any narration that our imams uh, used to that the imams stayed together live together in one house after marriage um these are two questions and we also have a comment from brother muntazi muhammad saying you have now gained um, a nice court. Don't try to change the daughter-in-law completely. He's very impressed with your court. Um, very soon we'll see a very nice infographic court about you um, doing the rounds on WhatsApp. But um, tell us these two things. Do you um, think that this is an Islamic practice? And if yes or no, regardless, one of the any imams who, who practice that? On another note, dear viewers, we will be taking um, questions in the next five to ten minutes. Please um, do drop in your questions on the comment section and we will pick them up. Uh, thank you so much, uh, MJ. The first question is, is this an Islamic practice or not? You know, what Islam seeks to achieve is healthy family. So we have all sort of, when you look at Islamic history, some stayed with family and some did not stay with family. But the bottom line is whether stayed with family or not was to give them their privacy is of great importance. Privacy doesn't mean only about hijab. I beg you, my brothers and sisters, I'm very passionate about this topic. Privacy is not just about hijab alone. For them to talk and build themselves, for them to be able to instill the values they think is right, as per mm -hmm. the teachings of Islam in, in, in bringing their children, is of great importance. And so, I would say yes, I would say yes and no, in the sense that so long as people will be given their privacy and family bonding will not be sacrificed and that marriage will not be sacrificed, there is nothing wrong with that. Number two, do we have any traditions from our imams where families stay together? Let's take a typical example of Imam Amir al muminin and Bibi Fatima and the Holy Prophets. You've been to Medina, most of you. You saw the house of the prophets. And we are shown the room of Imam Amir al-Mu'minin, alayhi salam. And if you go around Medina also, there's another place where, according to some narration, Imam Ali and Bibi Fatima used to stay there. Prophet, alayhi salam, would never even enter the house without saying salam and asking for their permission to enter. Subhanallah. Let alone wanting to know what food Bibi Fatima was cooking, what was happening today. No. These are Masumin. And Prophet was Masum, alayhi salam. So the practices were there, both, so long as their privacy was maintained and they were allowed to grow without a shadow of doubt. You know, I've got a great scholar that I remember a lot, you know, in Qom, by the name Dr. Rafi'i you know, very strong in Quran and he did a lot of work when it comes to marriage. You know, I was reading one of his books some time ago and he was analyzing causes of divorce and he said one of it is what? It's interference. And he said, why don't you take you from the life of Imam Ali and Bibi Fatima and how the Holy Prophet related to that relationship? And so therefore, this is a holistic way of life, Banna. 
and we need to make sure we follow it accordingly and we'll be happy inshallah we should not hide just behind culture 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 yeah. culture is good so long as it does not clash with the teachings of islam muhammad and wa'ali muhammad yeah. al bayt are here to guide us and let us follow and emulate their footsteps um, thank you, Sheikh. Now, um, Abbas and Shaheen, I have a few questions for you. Um, and I saw there was a mini discussion going on there, which is very healthy uh, um, for, for tonight's show. But I have, I, I have seen a question, um, read a comment that says there should be pre marriage seminars. Now, I agree with that. There are communities who do that. Um, Dar es Salaam is also one of them. And I had my pre marriage seminar, but I had, a, I had an observation. And I think you, you, uh, both of you are the right people to ask this question. Uh, and, and you know, I had this discussion with, with the organizers of today's event as well. And, and I said, when the merit seminar happened, the pre merit seminar, I was called into the pre merit seminar. And I was told, look, this is what's going to happen. And these are the instances. And, and a role play was done. It was fantastic. You know, I learned a lot. But when I went home, I asked myself the question uh, my, my wife, uh, to me, is going to be staying, um, if not with my in laws, uh, with her in laws, sorry then she will be staying next door or, or two, two, two streets away or three streets away. And there is going to be um, always conversations happening. Why wasn't my mom called into this show, uh, into a seminar? So do you think there is a need for, for, um, for parents to be called into seminar? Um, so that because I'll give an example. Um, and, and again, I, you know, this is all uh, my thought process. And I'm not saying it, it might be right or something you agree with. But for, for mothers who have only one son, you know, and, and he's the only son, and there is no, and let's say no, no other child apart from the son, to see um, the, the fact that the son is now sharing, um, you know, yeah. the mother with, 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 with the daughter-in-law. I'm sure it, it brings about a lot of questions. And the same with the father. You know, the father was someone who keeps saying the son, let's do this, let's do this. And all of a sudden now the son says, okay, look, I can't do this because I have to do this. But don't you think it's time? where parents now get called into pre marriage seminars and we told, listen, this is how it's going to happen. This is how you accommodate a new um, daughter-in-law coming home. Like Abbas said, his mom told him that you need a cleaner at home, but Shaheen is, is, is probably one of the best uh, people when it comes to clean. Maybe she's an OCD person, you know, she keeps everything clear. So maybe um, if, if Maybe if, if, you, if your mom forced this, then Shaheen and the cleaner would have issues at home. And that means that you would be put into the, you know, into the sink. So tell us, do you think it's important? Do you think it's time to adapt to this situation? So I, I think, MJ, the, the, Aftab is actually one of the, the organizations. Back in 2012 or something, we actually had in-laws seminar in right. uh, Dar es Salaam, Jamaat. And Fatim by Somja of Zanzibar. We right. co-facilitated, Shine couldn't travel then, but you're bang on that without a doubt, uh, we've done this in Mombasa uh, as well, where we had an in-laws workshop. You, you know, uh, just picking up on what Sheikh Nuru said, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a almost like a fundamental point here that plays into the luck. The people who will attend these seminars will be people who themselves still want to actively learn, even in their 50s, in their 60s, in their 70s, they still want to improve as people. Right. And therefore, the same people who will attend workshops, uh, majority of them, you'll see they will not have issues in the, with their daughter-in-law because they already have that mindset. Abbas, Abbas I agree with you because you know, I always yeah. have this conversation. So, I, I'm coming there. I always have this conversation with Sheikh Noor and I tell him, I said, look, holding a program at mosque about drugs, for example, we know solve the issue because those who come to mosque are on the part of the problem. Now, and, 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 and to add on to you, I, I had a suggestion to after when, when, I, when I met them and I said, don't you think, Abbas, and, I, and I'm going to put you into this, don't you think it be, if, if Jamaat's made it a mandatory um, a session, yeah. don't you think it would make a change? Now, this is where, with Zoom and modern technology, we can do this. Because I found one of the biggest hurdles. So if you are someone who's in their 50s, 60s, they come to this workshop, the ones who still haven't evolved completely in adult mode, you know, they're always worried what other people will think. This right. mother will always worry. You know, now in Zoom, they can do it. Okay. The, the, so you know what the crux comes to this the pe the mothers who have issues or the fathers who have issues is i say at the beginning if their children have been their only purpose of life and have no other purpose right you see if you go back to the prophetic traditions people who have souls that are at peace who have peaceful souls they have a purpose they know life has a massive expansive purpose 
you go to huge souls you know it's their life is much bigger than this their children they've got uh, a life of their own they've got ambitions of their own they've got children are just one part of their life they're learning they're sailing they're reading they're uh, cooking they're growing they're helping they're teaching quran their madrasa teachers they're cycling they're mountain climbing you know at, even in their 50s 60s they're attending tafsir they're saying you will never find those parents have issues with their their children or their in-laws because they grow their soul is still growing the ones that have issues with their, their soul is just getting smaller and smaller and constricting because they fear that they've lost their now i had sent another slide i don't know if we can try that change cycle slide you know right after marriage this is a natural process your mother will go through this mj if you're the only son your parents will go through this you know dr akbar muhammad ali in, in haideri i think he used to give counseling to parents of newly wedded children counseling of grief like they've lost their child because this is what will happen for the first year or two years while you try to build this new bond with your your wife your parents will feel like they've lost you it's a hard process you're going through change your wife is going through change uh your mother is going through change your father is going through change the parents of your wife will be going through a lot of change they've lost their daughter so for example when shine got married she was her dad's right hand woman she was the son at that time because it was very difficult for him to let go uh, it, but that is the process and you whenever someone goes through change they go through a negative period they get depressed they'll cry they'll feel unhappy then they transition and they accept it so this is and then you, this is what happens to our parents they've got their head that's saying i have to let my parents my children be happy but their heart are grieving and this is why interference or whatever this happens i hope that answers interesting yeah. i'm just going to make a very um koja ik gujarati comment you know um, and we always have this joke at home where they say um the boy doesn't know what to do because if if he sits at home they tell him to 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 garwa rocho if he goes out they tell him you are a rakru if he if he become someone of his wife they kill him to bai rocho ne to man ocho to ma ho you and and there is no winning you know if the boy sits at home he's always someone sitting on the couch if he goes out he's someone who is always uh, you know out in the streets roaming around if he's his wife they like you sold your soul to your wife and if you are if you if you put your heart in your mother's uh, you know in your mother's soul and then even then there's a problem i want to bring sister shine into this i know yahya is far away from 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 bringing in uh, you know a, a wife into your house and 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 inshallah uh, you get the opportunity to to be a mother in law and 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 i'm sure you will uh, make a very good one um, how do you um, you know how do, what what would your advice be in in bringing people um, let's say for for daughter in laws I'll give you my example, my family example, and and it's very personal, and and I, and I don't mind sharing it here. Um, we are four brothers. Um, two of my brothers already married, and I'm the third one. Um, and and uh, my my sister now stays with us. Uh, I, you know, and 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 hats off to her. I don't know how she's done it, um, and she's done it for eight years. Um, and then my 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 elder brother, he uh, stays separate from us. And now I'm going to get married. I'm just going to stay next door with my parents. And and the issue that I it's not an issue i face but it's a question i keep we keep uh, having between myself and and my wife to be is how easy would it be for 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 her to get integrated into into the family you know because there's already two daughter in laws there you know there's always this question about um who is who is who is the limelight who is stealing the limelight from whom right so what would you advise me to mother in laws first of how they can um, easily integrate a daughter in law into the family and two for a daughter in law to easily integrate into a family mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a really good question and um Abbas has been giving me a, a couple of things already. But um my first instinct was as as the mother-in-law, like we were to- saying earlier, you want the best for your family. You want your new daughter-in-law to and your your son to be happy together, right? So keeping all of the things that we've discussed in mind, giving them the space to to grow. Every woman wants to be the queen of their their space, their domain. So giving them that, you know, whatever it is, I, I love this aspect of living next door. I think that's my ideal as well. I've heard of people, you know, having a duplex where they can be close enough to each other to support each other, but at the same time they have their privacy. Right. Um, I, but like we said, even with a different house, that interference can happen. So the 
the key thing here is to be aware, right? Going back to your earlier point about how can we teach our uh, parents, what really impressed me was when in the lead up to this, several people said that they're watching this, for example, with their in-laws, which is really, really great, really open-minded. But at the same time, to shift your change or the way you think entirely is very hard. Yeah. So you know what, what we're doing through these Zoom conferences or workshops or whatever is just planting the seeds. It's just creating this awareness that, you know what, the next time maybe they make a comment or say something, they might then just think, oh, was I interfering? It's not going to stop the comments altogether. It's not going to create an overnight you know, change where suddenly they're, now they'll be in adult mode all the time. But it's just planting the seeds to think, OK, actually, you know what? In my last few interactions, how much space did I give them as a couple? Did I ask too many questions, for example? What was what, what kind of things was I getting them to, uh, you know, uh, influencing them in perhaps? So as an as a as a mother-in-law, I would just kind of try and hopefully be assessing myself all the time. Am I giving them that space? Am I treating them as an adult or am I not? As a daughter-in-law, I think the first thing that I would say is don't come in thinking of yourself as a daughter-in-law because you're already kind of setting yourself up for at a disadvantage. If you come in thinking, you know what, This, these are the parents of my husband, my husband who I love, I've chosen to spend the rest of my life with, who I think has so many amazing qualities. They have raised him to be how he is. So they must have something really good in them already to have created him and raised him. And he clearly loves them and has a good relationship with them. So I want to basically slip into that. I am not like, a simple thing, yeah. simple thing. Mindset is really important. I've not saved my mom. You know, my, my two moms are Mommy Austin and Mommy Mombasa. It's not my um, mill or mother-in-law. When I speak to people about my mother-in-law, I don't call her my mother-in-law. I call her Mommy Mombasa, for example. But it's just these little things which how the way you perceive your, 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 his parents will have an effect on how you behave. Um, so that's one thing. Remembering the change cycle, Abbas was talking about how it affects the parents, it will also affect the daughter-in-law. So there will be ups and downs. There will be moments when you are settling in and you just feel really sad and you you know, you know want to cry, you want, you're want you overwhelmed. And that's okay, that's not a sign insecure. that- Yeah. Very insecure. That's not a sign that uh, you know the, the relationship's on the rocks so or you're in such a bad environment. It's just uh, the process of change. Um, and the best person to help you through this and the best person to help you adjust and integrate is the husband. He has a crucial role in this. So MJ, you have a crucial role coming up in that as you welcome a new person into your life, remember right. there are so many new things for her. Everything right. is different. Everything is different, especially if she's coming in from the UK or wherever. The where you will live, where she will live is different. What you know, what her everything. lifestyle will be is different. Who she is surrounded by is new different. Mosque, new mosques, new friends, friends yeah. everything. Um, and it is up to you as a husband to support her, to listen to her, to you know, just be with her when through her Encourage ups and her, her downs. Yeah. To tell her she's doing a really good job, you know, uh, to just guide her that maybe if she made a mistake, if she didn't clean the kitchen the way it was supposed to or switch something off with. I mean, I've heard examples of difficulties over the smallest things that you left the lights on, for example, uh, and you know, that's wasting energy. We don't do this. Or you're, you're holding the fridge open for too long. Little, little things that can become big because that's not how it's done in our house. So as a husband, it's your job not to point fingers or to say, yes, you know, they're still unhappy or you're still not doing this right, but just say, look, that was really great and you had, you know, but mm. maybe this is something that uh, you weren't aware of or keep those lines of communication um, open. Do you have anything to add? Not to uh, if, if there was no added pressure there, I have some more. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. It's, it's, it's a brilliant piece of advice and I saw Sheikh Noor nodding his head and smiling and laughing about it. Um, I hope he has uh, he has some, some good advice up his sleeve like he always has. Now, um, you know, we, 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 we are approaching the end of this program, but I don't want to end it uh, without um, having a final input from, 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 from the three of you. And I'm going to start with Abbas and Shane again, because 
I want um, Sheikh Noor to, to give me a powerful um, advice that, that, that hopefully doesn't create um, what's a broadcast like, uh, like, like it has happened in the past. Uh, Abbas and Shaheen, question number one and your concluding remarks. So my question to you is, if you had to make a decision now, uh, would you stay with your, with your son or would you um, advise him to stay separate? It's, it's, I want him to be independent. I, I personally want to buy out the house next door <laughs> so he can have his own space. But right. I can see my grandchildren grow up. He doesn't know this, but I hope he's not listening. Um, but um, you know what? There is no one answer. Everyone's situation is unique. Economics, yeah. So many things play a role. I think they've just, yeah. there was a question on Facebook about one parent has passed away and he's the only son. So what do you do when you're the only son and your mother is right. alone but you didn't i think the answer is not uh it is is it depends okay at that situation but to flip this question mj i think now that we're parents it is so important to make this relationship work with our parents and i tell you why this is only one reason there's so many if you're not at peace with your parents and there's always you will feel like there's something missing in you all the time if there's conflict in your relationship with your parents you won't be able to feel the depth of the love between each other if there's a uh, conflict up here whether there's conflict here or my parents up here you will always feel a hole missing that's the first thing. so if you're not at peace with yourself you won't be able to love the other they'll all the second thing now this having had children of our own the love grandparents give to grandchildren you cannot buy that anywhere. It's like that love, you want that bond to be strong so that your children never miss out on the love of the grandparents. If you shut out your in-laws or your parents from your life, you're shutting out your grandparents from the life of your grandchildren. They will hate you forever when they grow up or they will never realize what they've missed out because that love, you cannot buy it. But that gift that you can, uh, the, the, the security they get from grandparents will make them better human beings. And this is one, only one reason of multiple yeah, reasons. You know, I, I agree with you, Abbas, because uh, okay. you know, my, my brother also, um, you know, his wife just delivered a, a baby girl in January. And, and the way my, my dad walks in um, home from, from work and, and you look at the excitement, Alhamdulillah, my grandfather is still there. So you look at that excitement that they bring in, you know, it, it's a completely different distraction. I agree with you. I think, uh, you know, like you said, there is no one answer. We just have to find the right balance and ensure that, you know, you are not um, jeopardizing one relationship um, and, and, and you know, just trying to strengthen the other one. And I fully agree with you. Um, Sheikh Noor, I just want to say, uh, first, before um, you give me a concluding remark, that Abbas and Shaheen have been individuals who have influenced a lot of lives. And, and I'm telling you this, I, I, you know, I'm not someone who reads uh, a lot of these Islamic books. Uh, I've read a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, football-related and, and, and biographies um, of, of, uh, of, 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 of one of the greatest managers to have ever um, served the footballing community, but that's going to spice Abbas up. But, you know, and, and it's something I read, and, and, and I was talking to, to my wife, Tubi, and I said, listen, it's very different. Uh, when someone actually has taken the journey and, and the struggle to write something for you. Like right now, I, I don't have to go to Google and speak to five or six Molanas and, and, and counselors to see what the Amal um, needs to be done or, or things that, that, that I have to look into. And for that, you know, congratulations. And I pray, and I'm sure everyone here watching this, uh, we pray for, for your success, for, for your endeavors. And most of all, that you keep on inspiring people's lives. And hopefully, we get the opportunity to see you in Africa very soon. Um, I know you have a mummy, Mombasa, but I hope you now have a, a contact for uh, Dar es Salaam Jamaat on your phone books. I, hopefully, it, uh, it adds a lot of value to your lives. Um, let's bring you, Sheikh Noor, into this. You know, you obviously are someone that has always um, accepted whenever I've asked you or whenever the committee has asked you to discuss controversial social domestic issues. And... I must say that that requires a, that takes a lot of bravery and it also takes a lot of courage. There's not many people out there who would want to put uh, themselves in this situation. So for that, on behalf of Aftab, I want to thank 
the three of you for 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 taking uh, you know this challenge and i'm sure this is not going to be the last so this is the first of many many more to come um, so sheikh noor your advice and 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 can i ask you um, would you um, advise anyone who gets married now what would your first advice be to him um, in terms of, of, of parental relationship and whether, you know, keeping your parents um, is uh, closer or your in-laws closer? There's, there's this battle that always comes up, you know, um, the boy wants to keep his parents closer and the girl wants, uh, you know, and, and rightfully so, wants to keep her parents closer and then it becomes a tug of war. So how, what is your, you know, suggestion in terms of balancing the equation? Yeah, thank you so much, uh, IMG. You see... Islam provide us with general guiding principles on how to live our lives. Okay. It depends on us individuals to go and look for those guidelines and try to follow them. If someone comes to me, like yourself, who is getting married, what do I do, Chef? My simple advice will be, MG, your parents have right over you and your wife also has right over you. She has right over you, they have right over you. And there is no contradiction between the two. What is important is to make sure your marriage work and your relationship with your parents also work. Quran is our guide. Quran says, whoever, although talks of parents, but I'm just saying whoever, ask you to do something contrary to the teachings of God, you should not do it. So that's my advice. That would be my advice. Your parent, respect to them, honor them, take care of them. If your parent wants you to be there 12 hours a day, then that's not possible. Because your wife also needs your time. Because sometimes I find gentlemen come to me, but they want me to be there 12 hours. I said, it doesn't make sense diplomatically disagree with them and there's nothing wrong to disagree with them if you are to spend 12 hours with them then you will be violating the right of your wife so that will be my advice creating a balance is easy if you truly want to create a balance number two conclusion which i'm driving from this discussion is that marriage has to be saved we must try by all means to save marriage. So in-laws have duties to play towards that. And you as a husband, you have a role to play towards that. It has to be saved. And you are central to that. Stop telling your wife, I don't know what to do, they are my parents. <laughs> you know what, that, what it does? <clears throat> Emotionally, it destroys the girl. This is serious. Some are emotionally drained and they stop talking because when they speak, the husband said, what do I do? What do you want me to do? Can I go against my parents? It's not about going against them, Habibi. Diplomatically and respect respectfully speak to them. So that is very, very important. Create a balance. And the third takeaway really from here is that we need more workshops and more conversations of this nature. Alhamdulillah, we have Haji Abbas and Sister Shaheen. And during this time of virtual programs, let's take advantage of these opportunities. And Alhamdulillah, the book that Haji Abbas and Sister Shaheen wrote, congratulations to them, really is amazing. It's long overdue. And eventually the book is there. Let us read and try to apply some of these practical steps that are in the book. But we need more workshops. Member, we need to speak. We have to, seriously. And we need workshops. Communities, Baba, out of all that we do in a community, number one top priority should be marriage. And last but not least, premarital counseling is crucial. And I always say, if you want to do proper premarital counseling, get marriage expert on board and get Islamic opinion on board and get someone with a legal background on board. And not only the normally only girls in some places go for premarital counseling. Boys are not there. So I'm happy to hear in Dar es Salaam, MJ, you went for marital counseling. 
In many places, only girls go. And during marriages, girls are bombarded with a lot of advices. And boys, nowhere. We need to create a balance. Not only bringing boys on board, a loss must also be there. So therefore, it's really relative. Staying with them or not with them, bottom line is, people deserve their privacy. In laws deserve their privacy, and the couple deserve their privacy. Even if you are sharing three bedroom house, privacy is a very important. Even in cooking, it shouldn't be always there must be one food in the house. Husband and wife, they want to have their nice food. Don't stop them from going to Nando's and having nice barbecue out there sometimes. You don't have to go with them always, my father and mother. No, no, family going, no, chill, my father, relax. Allow them sometimes, let them go out and, you know, enjoy themselves. So therefore, it all depends how we go about it, whether we are staying together or we are not staying together. But if you ask me as a person, what is my personal take? As a person, my personal take is that it will always be proper for them to stay separately so that they can build their lives. Let them learn from the hard way. Don't worry, they'll be fine. Don't worry. Just make dua and guide them. Your role is to guide them. Don't worry. They will be fine. Too much tawis. Nadir, all. Don't worry. It will be okay. Why are you stressing yourself too much? I need you here, man. God bless you. And I must say, Abbas and Shane, you are great inspirational to our communities. And we pray for you. And may Allah bless you and protect you. Keep up the good work, inshallah. We are all solidly behind you, Habibi. Keep it up. Shekna, I need the, the, the Dawes of Imam Sadiq that you usually give out to your very close friends. <laughs> um, you know, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it has been a fruitful conversation, bar a few technical um, issues that I was facing on my end, and I'm sure um, it did create a lot of um, issues for, for, for your ears, in particular because of of the amount of echo and, um, and and cutoff that was coming in. So my sincere apologies for that. But um, I would like to end this with, uh, firstly, to sincerely appreciate um, the panelists and also the organizers of the show. Um, they have really thought through this. Um, they have taken the, uh, you know, the advice. And, and I think this is a very prevalent issue. And, and you know, kudos to, to the three of you who have come out here to have this discussion. Uh, again, you know, it takes a lot of courage um, and also a lot of wisdom um, for that. And, and, and to our dear viewers who are watching this, um, this is not the end. This is just the beginning of another journey. Um, like uh, the panelists have said, please um, try and ask for help. It is okay to ask for help, but it is not okay um, uh, you know, to keep struggling on yourself. There is experts out there, but just make sure you reach out to the right experts. Do not just reach out to any random person. Make sure you're taking legal advice, you're taking uh, proper counseling advice, and, and, and run through this through your Islamic um, aspect as well, through your scholars, through your, your teachers. But my concluding remark would be, uh, I don't even know if I, if I want to answer this question, but, but, uh, but I will take this um, as, 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 as a learning um, from, from the three of you that um, there has to be a balance, and, and that is the key. There is no right or wrong here. And the answer is a balance. Uh, and if we get the right balance, it's going to be a problem. It's going to take time. But I'm sure one day we will get there. And I hope that it is not very long and far away that we get it right. Um, there's a few um, comments that have come in in regards to what the name of the book is. The name of the book is Building a Successful Relationship. Um, it is available on World Federation's website. It is also um, available um, through Abbas and Shaheen, so you can get a uh, hold of them through the social media channels, and I'm sure they will, they will guide you um, to the right channels to get hold of this book. To all our dear viewers who have sent in your questions, your remarks, your comments, your opinions, this is um, our, um, you know, this is this is our happiness. This is how we get to learn, and this is how we can improve um, for the next program. Yes, this 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 YouTube link will be available for others to view it on a later time. Please share it with your friends and family. And one, on a final note, Eid Mubarak to you all. I know your Eids have have ended. You you know you might be preparing for for uh, you know for 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 your night snack. Um, like Abbas was having a nice yogurt um, dessert there, I, I saw it. Um, and he has a stain on his shirt, but he doesn't know about it. I'm joking about it. It's fine. Before you get in trouble with, with Shaheen. 
Um, it's been brilliant. Uh, thank you very much, dear viewers. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Right, it should really be said, compiled by Shaheen Mirali. It's his concepts. We work well together. We yeah. have learned how to work well together. <laughs> we have learned how to work well together. What is our ultimate purpose? What is the ultimate purpose of marriage? And how can we actually achieve that through this relationship that we are now in? Why is it that there's so much importance given to this relationship and how can we maximize that? Anecdotally, in our communities at the moment, the divorce rate is one in every four. We've always said there should be only one reason why a marriage is doomed from day one. The rest of the reasons, I think, in our community, we should be able to work through. And this is the reason for this book, is to try and reduce the number of breakups. It's for anybody who wants to enhance the quality of their relationship. Maybe they're struggling, maybe with communication or, you know, all these typical things that we hear about, but don't really know what to do next. It covers all aspects of marriage. Just when you've gotten married and you're in the honeymoon phase, to marriage after having children, and then marriage in the later stages, so when maybe your children have grown up. We've always viewed marriage like a heartbeat monitor, and you see it go ups and downs. And that's really the journey we've tried to capture in this book, from pre-honeymoon to the honeymoon phase to post-honeymoon and all the highs and lows we go through in a marriage journey. It should really be said, compiled by Shaheen Mirali. It's his concepts. We work well together. We yeah. have learned how to work well together. <laughs> we have learned how to work well together. What is our ultimate purpose? What is the ultimate purpose of marriage? And how can we actually achieve that through this relationship that we are now in? Why is it that there's so much importance given to this relationship and how can we maximize that? Anecdotally, in our communities at the moment, the divorce rate is one in every four. We've always said there should be only one reason why a marriage is doomed from day one. The rest of the reasons, I think, in our community, we should be able to work through. And this is the reason for this book, is to try and reduce the number of breakups. It's for anybody who wants to enhance the quality of their relationship. Maybe they're struggling, maybe with communication or, you know, all these typical things that we hear about, but don't really know what to do next. It covers all aspects of marriage. Just when you've gotten married and you're in the honeymoon phase to marriage after having children and then marriage in the later stages, so when maybe your children have grown up. We've always viewed marriage like a heartbeat monitor and you see it go ups and downs. And that's really the journey we've tried to capture in this book from pre-honeymoon to the honeymoon phase to post-honeymoon and all the highs and lows we go through in a marriage journey.